Good afternoon, everyone. Lisa Martin here with Rob Strache. We are coming to you live from the VMware Explorer at the Venetian Expo. This is day one of three days of CUBE coverage. We have two sets, lots of content. It's also our 13th year of covering VMware customer events. We have one of the luminaries from Pure Storage finally making his debut on theCUBE. Please welcome Cody Hosterman, Senior Director of Product Management at Pure. Great to have you, Cody. It's, it's really great to be here. I've been, I've been watching the, the streams for many, many years and it's very fulfilling for me to be on here with you. So thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. So talk to us a little bit about Pure's big focus at VMware Explore this year. I know there's some breaking news that broke this morning. Yep. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously one of the big messages here is multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, the Wi-Fi password is multi-cloud, multi right? You know, <laughs> um, you know, send the, you usually say like send a message in your Wi-Fi name, but they went with a password, right? I think it's very interesting. Um, no, a uh, major focus for us, a major announcement for us just today was our support of Azure VMware so solution with our product, Pure Cloud Block Store. Uh, the, you know, a first enterprise block external offering for a VMware cloud. We're super excited to get this in the market. Um, it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty cool day for us. I bet. Talk about the also what that means in terms of the expansion and the evolution of Pure's relationship and partnership with VMware and what that signifies. Yeah, this is a really important step for us around our go-to-market partnership with with both VMware and Microsoft. Right, is that we can a, a, an important part of what we're introducing here is help to optimize cost and really make the Azure VMware solution environment fit our customers' needs, right? Because a lot of customers needed some changes, needed some additional storage capacities, and it wasn't working out for them today. And so basically what we can do is by introducing our product into the sales cycle, we can shorten it and sell with these VMware and Microsoft sellers that were currently blocked out of some of these opportunities. So we have a really nice partnership around helping them sell their services, which is really what our focus is, in particular in the public cloud. How can we help the cloud vendors, VMware, sell their offerings with our product? I mean, Pure has been known for go fast storage for quite a while now. How, how is this, and how are the folks that are going to be using AVS, Microsoft's Azure VMware service, so or solution? I, I always solution. get I always get it always mixed There's an up. S in there, I'm just know. going to go AVS because <laughs> I don't work for them. Sounds so, <laughs> um, but I, how are they going to be able to take advantage of mm. the go fast storage that Pure is so known for, and how does that really play within the Microsoft environment as well. Yeah, I, I think there's there's two main points here, and I could I could feather that into about a thousand other ones, but I'll keep it to two. Is really there's two things that we've done well historically across the board, right? So one is like, we build our product on the concept of data reduction, efficiency, deduplication, compression, pattern removal, thin provisioning. And we built this to make flash cost effective, right? I mean, this is what we built our company on. And you know, surprise, surprise, these efficiencies also make a pretty big impact in the public cloud. Right, how introducing our data reduction technologies to make efficient use of the backend storage reduces the footprint, makes it more cost effective, and brings that into the, the cloud environment. The other prong here is just the VMware use case. Uh, about over three quarters of our flash array customers are running VMware on one or more of their flash arrays. It's a huge business for us. We've put a lot of energy into our co-engineering with VMware to, to make it a really streamlined and simple use case. And so all the stuff that we've built for on-premises VMware environments are now available with Azure VMware Solution. Talk a little bit about the customer demand. Obviously you're, la you're launching this now, I imagine customers were asking for it. You were talking about some of the challenges that they were having. How were customers involved in the, the actual evolution of this and the partnership? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple pieces here. Like, certainly what started our interest in this and the Microsoft's interest as well is that they've been getting customer demands. Like, hey, we use Pure On-Prem, we want to take advantage of it in the public cloud. We like this feature, we like this use case, whatever the case may be. There was building demand around that across the board. Um, and of course, there was losses, right? There were customers not able to take advantage of the product, right? We saw a couple different reasons around, struggles around databases, cost optimization, and overall feature usage. And when we dug down into it, it was storage related problems. And so we can open up that to those customers that were looking at AVS but couldn't for some other reason. And of course, in the, the, the process of bringing it to market, we had customers in what Microsoft calls private preview, validating use cases. We had about 15 or 20 things we really specifically wanted customers to give us feedback on. Is this right? Is this truly solving your problem? So we didn't want to launch something that was just a checkbox. We wanted to truly solve customer problems around their adoption with AVS. And so it's been a great partnership with our customers, with Microsoft as well. 
one of the notes I, I was reading about Cloud Block Store for AVS is that customers can achieve up to a 10x cost reduction. So we're talking about significant savings potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's really there's two there's two pieces at play around this cost savings, right? One is uh, you know data reduction, compression, you know reducing the footprint. That's a part of it, but not honestly the main one. A big part of it is that a significant amount of on-premises VMware customers are storage heavy. 60% or so of external storage users are block, and there's some file as well, and then there's a smattering of other options um, on-premises. And so a significant amount of them are very storage heavy. And so those customers themselves were, were fairly blocked out around the particular solution itself. And so bringing that, bringing that into AVS and opening up that market was really a key piece of what we were trying to do here. And it would seem that having same kit on-prem and in the cloud gives them advantages, especially when you look at mobility and data, data reduction and what you bring up into the cloud. Maybe you want to go to AVS and use uh, certain, you know, you want to burst for GPUs to do some you know, LLM fun, something like that. Exactly, and, and that's, that's kind of more the point that I want to get as well on the cost optimization point around that 10X number is that if you need more storage without external storage like Pure, you have to provision more compute, right? Uh, that's, you're paying for compute that you don't need. And so we can reduce the amount of compute that you need to the exact that you actually want, and then add in the amount of storage that you need, really right-sizing the environments. And so where these large numbers around cost savings come into are use cases where you don't necessarily need all that compute right now, disaster recovery. You could provision zero compute and just use our product to store the data and then bring up the environment as needed. Analytics, dev test, places where it's very elastic, we can reduce what you need of compute to a very minimal amount introducing significant cost savings and those particular use cases across the board. What's been some of the feedback to today? Obviously the news broke this morning at 6 a.m. Pacific time, but what have, what have you heard on the show floor, analysts, customers? Um, I, it's, it's been, it's been uh, there's been a lot of different pieces of feedback. I think one of my favorite quotes is that it was from a customer that commented on one of my LinkedIn posts. And they're just saying, I have pure on-prem. I'm really excited to be able to finally use it in the public cloud. And that's really a cool thing for me to see across the board because I've been working our VMware ecosystem for a while. Similar thing with our channel partners. We've been comments it's like, I've been selling with Pure for a decade. I'm very excited to be able to finally sell with them really on the Azure VMware solution today too. So channel, channel partner customers and VMware folks. I've been getting a lot of VMware folks coming up to me this, at the booth and just randomly walking around. They're like, hey, this is like we see what you're doing. You're really solving a problem. This is opening up a new market for us, and so they're excited to talk to their customers about it. So it's been it's been fun to hear the feedback um, on this offering. Yeah, I I think one of the things that I, I I wonder about, and you can help me with this, is one of the things your customers, when I talk to them, they love is the pure evergreen. Is that part of this whole thing as well, or how so, does that work? Uh, that's a great question, because really Evergreen, there's two pieces that I see Evergreen come to play here. Um, so one is the consumption model, the licensing model, right? So we have an Evergreen One off, offer, offering that allows you to just purchase capacity from Pure. And that is applicable to flash arrays, on-premise hardware, flash array, and as well as Pure Cloud Block Store and Azure. And so that license can actually follow your data set. So if you're migrating, building new applications in the Azure VMware solution, either one, uh, in, in particular the migration, you don't need to line that migration up with your storage refresh. You move it as needed, that license follows it, and if you empty that flash array on premises because you've been fully moved into the cloud, that gets shipped back to Pure. We own it, it's, it's your OpEx paying for the capacity. And so the licensing model makes it really flexible to ma make this migration happen at your pace at the amount that you want to actually move it to. That's one piece, kind of the economic model of it. The other side is the, tech, the technical model, the technology that we introduce. Part of the evergreen story is that your product is evergreen, right? It gets better and better and better over time. We continue to invest in improving the product. Uh, very recently, we moved from Ultra SSD, which is a, a form of block storage within Azure, into premium SSD V2, and we moved our controllers from a D-series to E-series compute improving our performance by 30% and dropping the cost of running our product by a third. Um, significant improvement that just came with a random purity upgrade. It was literally our code, it was six, I think it was purity 645 if I recall, right? It's just a very innocuous number. We're releasing monthly on our purity offering. And so the evergreen promise is, is not just about the mobility of licensing, but also just really just you're subscribing to innovation to the platform. And that's a big part of our software only model when it comes to CBS. So the solution that was announced this morning, when is that going to be generally available for the regions? So it is in public preview right now. So any customer can go on and try it out. 
Um, GA usually happens, and Microsoft process is usually about 90 days or so around it, and that can vary based on customer feedback. So if we have some significant feedback we want to go and dress and make some changes, that can delay it a little bit longer, but generally it's around 90 days, so we expect GA towards the end of the year. Nice, and is this kind of the, uh, an expansion in the Microsoft partnership? I mean, or is this the first step in a partnership that is continuing to grow? Oh, this is, um, it's, it's certainly a major stop, uh, but it's certainly not our first one, but it's, it's definitely a big one for us. Uh, we've been offering Cloud Block Store in Azure, and there's many other parts of Cure's business, of course, that in, interact with Azure, right? Our Portworx team, you know, we've spoken to Vencat yeah. in the past, and Flashblade as well, some EDA uh, use cases. Um, but at least from the, the, the software side and the Cloud Block Store side, this is certainly a step, but not the first one. We've been seeing a tremendous amount of growth in what we call the cloud storage optimization um, offering where customers are looking to invest in Azure in different ways, uh, AWS as well. Uh, I want to spend my money on more strategic initiatives, AI pipelining and past services around that, but I'm not getting more money in my IT budget to spend. And so what do you do? You have to find somewhere in your budget to save money and reallocate that cost. And so we've been seeing customers look at their bill. It's like, well, the two biggest places are compute and storage, right? Not functionally different than you see on premises, right? When it comes to the biggest cost centers. And so they're like, all right, we right size our compute, and what can we do around right sizing storage? Well, there's not a lot you can do. You can drop tiers, you can sacrifice features. There's not much else. And so they, were, they did that, but didn't really save the money they needed to invest in these other places. And so that's where we got brought in. Our product is about optimization of storage footprint, as a data reduction, dedupe, uh, compression, all that type of stuff and saving 30, 40% on their cloud storage bill, which they can reinvest, right? And that money, you know, like sometimes we talk to Azure sellers and they're like, well, we don't want them to spend less. Like, no one spends less. Like if you, if you spend mo your money more wisely at home, yeah. uh, you don't give it back to the, your company, right? You, you, you put <laughs> no. it in your investment or you buy a TV or whatever. <laughs> Same thing, is that that money is being reallocated to far more strategic initiatives um, within Azure. And so we've been seeing some great success that makes Microsoft happy, us happy, because we're selling to happy customers, and these customers are spending their money more strategically. And so it's been a motion that we've been working on for a while, and, we, and that we announced a major customer that purchased that um, at our recent uh, annual fiscal reporting as well. So we're, we're uh, seeing a lot of success in that area too. So continued flywheel of momentum at Pure Storage, which we always see year after year. What are some of the things that excite you about the, say the next, you know, six months, 12 months, and, and in particular in your relationship with VMware as it evolves. Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of things. I mean, like, I, like, I'm certainly excited about, we finally had this AVS offering uh, in public preview so customers can, can dive in and really take advantage of it. And I'm excited just to see the partnership between our sales organizations and our joint customers really grow. So I think I'm truly excited about that. Um, certainly we're doing a lot with VMware. Um, we've always made a point with VMware to co-engineer offerings, uh, really build the vSphere platform and the external storage ecosystem further and further. Uh, we recently um, added uh, NFS data stores to our offering uh, for a unified experience around flash array, so block and file, and we're working with VMware to push that forward too. There's a lot of stuff that hasn't been happening around that, around uh, enhancements on the NFS stack, and VMware's really open to working with us on that. So there's some cool things coming with that. Overall, we've been spending a lot with NVMware Fabrics in the virtual volume program. Uh, with VMware, and uh, we have, you know, we're releasing NVMware Fabric support for vVault quite soon. We have a new version of a certificate management for VASA providers with vVault. There's a lot coming out just on the core storage side with VMware. So I'm excited about some of the conversations I had with VMware PM this week, what we can start moving on, and the things we'll be shipping over the next six months. So yeah, there's, was, there's a ton coming on the core of VMware. I was going to say, you were one of the first to actually support vVols on, on an array. I remember back to when that was there. And, we, yeah. we, uh, pure, I, we weren't the first. Like, so there was a kind of an early wave around it. Yeah. Um, and then we were, I would say, I call us the second wave, yeah. right? Where when we came in and we re-looked at the architecture, how can truly simplify it? I call us one of the leaders of that second wave of Evol vendors that really simplified the platform um, and really brought it into the kind of the core thinking and, and strategy around our customers around storage. So I think we've been very vocal about it. And frankly, um, that's a fairly common thought that we were the first ones, because frankly, my personal view, we're the first ones to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, shots fired. There, shots fired. Yeah. That's a mic drop uh, moment, okay, right there. There we go. You are officially a CUBE alumni. We so appreciate <laughs> you coming on and sharing the great news and the continued momentum that we see from Pure Storage. We yeah, I really appreciate the time. This has been a lot of fun. Yep. Thank you very much. Good, our pleasure.
for our guests and for Rob Scutche. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMware Explorer 23. Stick around. Dave Vellante is here next with a great insights on day one of our coverage. We'll see you soon. Thank you.